Now, hopefully, if you agree with the contents of this video, you'll consider following the show on Twitter and smashing that subscribe button. And if you don't, probably should do the same thing, too, because maybe sometimes you need somebody to lash out at. And I'm strong enough at this stage of my life to be able to handle it. So please feel encouraged to do so. But I got to admit, a couple of days ago when this news broke that Andrade had requested his release from WWE and ultimately wasn't granted it, it became this big thing. Like, obviously, it made all the wrestling websites and dirt sheets. And, you know, he ended up trending on Twitter at one point in time last week. And it was a really big deal. And everybody seemed to have an opinion and talking about it. And I, I just, I got to ask, why? Like, that's the first question. Why? Why is this such a big deal? Why is this such a big topic of discussion? Why does this matter? Furthermore, what does Andrade bring to the table that is so special that so many people feel that they need to opine on this? Like, obviously I am too. I'm just, I'm fascinated by this. Because if I go out there and ask you, and I did on Twitter, uh, ask you what's the big deal about Andrade? What makes him so special that gets this level of attention? We're doing a lot of really good responses. The old standard, well, he's a really good wrestler. Well, A, just because you can do moves doesn't automatically make you a good wrestler. B, just because you think, oh, he had a great takeover match with Johnny Garbaggio. Well, whoop the fucking do. Those are the types of matches that appeal to the lowest common denominator of the neckbeard wrestling fan base. The ones that psychology and selling don't matter. I just got to get in a bunch of crash test dummy crap. You know what I mean? But seriously, the whole, he's a good wrestler. Well, based off of the standards that a lot of you have, many of the people are. That doesn't make him special. You haven't told me why he's so much bigger and better in terms of as an in-ring performer, as a wrestler, than anybody else. That you have to keep him no matter what and utilize him and push him. Like, so what's the big deal here? I saw some of you talk about, well, yeah, he's not the greatest on the mic. He might not have great charisma. Okay, then. You know, those things that really matter in professional wrestling. Those things that could really actually try to make you a star. You're already acknowledging and saying he doesn't have them. And you don't know if he's going to have them. So again, I come back to why the hell is this such a big deal? And then others are saying, well, when he was with Selena Vega, like they had something. When he was with Selena Vega, it was kind of working. And you know what? I fundamentally do not disagree with any of that. It's a perfect example of WWE and namely Vince McMahon screwing with something because they fucking want to, because he's bored. He doesn't like something, no matter whether it works or not. It was working. I agree. Like, they did Andrade absolutely no favors whatsoever. But then when you keep having to bring up the fact of, well, he was great with Selena Vega, he was great with Selena Vega, well, then maybe, if anything, that suggests that Selena Vega is the one that you should have been more focused on. Selena Vega is the one that was the bigger deal. Selena Vega was the better talent. Selena Vega is the one that they should have been far more concerned with pushing and putting on television consistently and not Andrade. When your defenses for him and why you're making this such a big deal are, he does basically what everybody else does in terms of wrestling, in-ring action. He doesn't have great charisma or mic skills, but that's it. Well, that was a pretty big, significant thing. And again, a lot of other people in WWE, let alone wrestling as a whole, just in WWE. Those first two things are the same damn thing. And then the third thing is more of an emphasis point as to why Zelina Vega shouldn't be gone, more so than why you should be keeping Andrade or why he should be getting a push, what have you. I am just not hearing good defenses or good justifications. And look, I can understand this if you're saying, hey, this is a guy that you've invested television time into. He represents a demographic that you're trying to appeal to, hence all the stuff that you're doing with Bad Bunny. If you want to make that type of argument from a representation standpoint, from an appealing to a, a Latino, Hispanic demographic standpoint, then I'm all ears. Like, let's talk about that. Let's hash that out and determine whether Andrade is truly the best person to put in that spotlight. Because he seems like a great value version of Alberto Del Rio to me. But at least if you came at it from that approach, 
I could kind of understand it, especially if you're emphasizing, hey, this is somebody that you've invested television time in previously. It makes no sense to invest television time in somebody previously than to all of a sudden just stop it. I get it. Like when you talk about level of investment, return of investment, things like that, that's a, that's a sensible, logical, logical conversation. And I think an infinitely better discussion and argument to have that he could do moves in the ring, uh, but he can't talk, but that's all he can't do. That's a pretty big fucking thing. And the best thing that he had going for him is more representative of the woman, the female talent that they didn't do much with at once they broke it up. Because again, Vince fucking ruins everything or he tries to. Like if you want to have that kind of conversation, so be it. If you want to say, hey, you know, this is a guy that I think has great potential. I'm not hearing it. I didn't see it. And I'm certainly not hearing it from you guys. Like, is this more of just a situation that you're using this as an opportunity to rag on WWE when they are incredibly easy to rag on, both merited and deserved? And sometimes, frankly, it's the cheap, easy kind of lay, lazy kind of way out. Is that, well, they're not pushing this guy. It's just a representation of a bigger problem. So we're going to sit there and rage tweet about every single one that goes in their request to release because it represents this and it represents that. You know, there are a lot of things that we know and there are also a lot of things that we don't know. For all you freaking know, Andrade might not be picking it up. He might not be choosing to pick it up. He might not be working on those things that he has deficiencies or weaknesses or opportunities. He could be a total pain in the ass to deal with behind the scenes. He could be sitting there happy to coast along riding Charlotte's coattails at this point. There are things about this we probably don't know. It could also just be that they forgot about him and they've just decided not to use him because they're bored and they have nothing for him. Now, we know that certainly happens all the time in this damn company. But are we going to do this for every single person? Oh, because they can wrestle. A lot of these people in wrestling now can wrestle. They can do moves. Who gives a shit? If anything, that just makes them part of the schmas. If anything, it just makes them part of the problem. If anything, it just absolutely makes sure that they don't stand out from the crowd. What does this guy bring to the table that is so different, that's so unique, that you've got to have him, you've got to utilize him. What is it? And then your whole thing about, well, WWE doesn't want to release him. They didn't grant him his request for a release. They don't have to. If he's still under contract for them as an independent contract, I mean, it still comes down to the bigger, larger conversation of, how the fuck they can't release him for the contract? He can't work anywhere else, but he's not an employee for them. <laughs> Only been letting Vince's ass get away from that for almost four decades now, so I don't see why the hell that's going to change now. But why should they? Why should they feel pressured? They may feel as a company that it makes more sense to pay him to not use him than to let him go, save that money, and let him go somewhere else. Yes, that's petty. Yes, that's stupid. Yes, that's not exactly a great way to conduct business. I agree with all of those sentiments. But they're in the position where they can absolutely do that. And if that's what they choose to do, then that's what they choose to do. I mean, is this what we're going to do every single time that somebody either gets released or leaves the company or requests their release? Like we're going to sit there and use this as a larger talking about point about how the WWE ruins everything, how WWE is worst wrestling ever. Like I said, there are plenty of things and reasons to do that for. There are plenty of people that you can sit there and say, yeah, they totally screwed over over the years. Like if I was looking at one, I would say Zack Ryder. Like this is a guy that went and got over on his own help the company learn how to utilize the internet at a time that they really weren't very good at it, and especially social media and YouTube. Like, they stole all that shit from Ryder, let's be clear. And once he really started to get over, they intentionally sabotaged him and kept him down for almost a decade. Like, that's petty. That's stupid. But Andrade is no different or significant or special compared to anybody else. What the hell does it matter so much? And even if you want to say, hey... You're trying to appeal to that demographic and that fan base, talking about uh, Latin and Hispanic fans. Okay, is that the only Latin or Hispanic wrestler that they have on the roster that could possibly appeal to that demographic? Is he even the best choice out of the ones that you got? Maybe he is, but maybe he's not. Like, are we going to do this every single time? 
Like, I just really haven't heard many good reasons about what the hell is so special about this dude that has required so many people to go to such lengths to complain about this. Like, if you come up with better defenses and justifications, let's hear them. But the fact that he can wrestle is a stupid one. Because again, if you're saying most everybody in the company can do it, which we can kind of go with at this point, which is part of the problem, too much emphasis on the moves and the matches and not enough on all the other shit that actually matters, you can't say this, like, whoopee shit. You're just saying, if anything, he's just a cog in the wheel and easily interchangeable. That's not a great defense for why they've misused him or why he should be used more. If you're saying, well, he struggled with the language a little bit and da 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 you know, well... Work on it, get better on it. And if he's not working at it and he's not getting better at it, then you know, maybe you could understand why Vince doesn't use him. Or figure out a better way to get around that. Perhaps that falls on the company too, but maybe perhaps it falls on him. But sometimes people just don't have it. Like you could look great, but that doesn't automatically mean you bring charisma. That doesn't automatically mean you bring star power. And I don't see what was, again, so special about Andrade that you're sitting there in rage tweeting about this stuff. And when your best defense is about the lady that he was associated with, it's a better defense for why the company mistreated Zelina Vega than it is Andrade. So can we stop blowing up the internet and getting people to trend when they frankly really don't merit it or deserve it? Just an ask.